Diego, welcome back to the show, buddy. Oh, glad to be back. Uh, things are going good. I'm um, just down here in Florida doing this uh, last final UFC training camp, you know. Got excited, and um, me and Joshua Fabia were like, yep. this is the last one. we got to do it right. You know, I don't have a team. It's just me and him. We're the two-man team. Yeah. So we're like, let's go down to Florida. Contacted Dan Lambert at ATT, and he's like, hell yeah, come on down. Let's use the gym. And and one thing led to another, and, uh, you know, I'm, I got some good friends down here. Luis Palomino, the BKBFC champion. Right. And Hector Lombard. I got some good yeah, friends down here, the Cuban Connection. Yeah. And uh, they hooked me up with uh, Miami's best hidden secret man <laughs> el tigre you ever heard of el tigre no man tell me eric castanos oh. you look him up man he was 40 and one he's a he, he's a professional kickboxer man this dude is a is a real secret he worked with yoel romero he um he was the first uh trainer to really put the put the smooth kickboxing on uh on game bread okay. on masvidal okay cool he trained him when he was 17 all wow. the way up to, man, he trained him for, I think, five years when he was 17, was his first trainer. He's, he's, he's a real secret down here in Miami, down in South Miami. He um, don't speak very good English, but uh, he's a badass <laughs> mitt holder. He moves. He, he moves with you. He'll kick. He'll 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 kick you. He'll punch you. You know, you, while you're in a mitt session, yeah. you better fucking you better be ready. You better be aware. You'll get you'll catch a head kick. Yeah. Well, man, I want to say thank you for reaching out to me. Um, it's a compliment to me, man. We did a podcast before, like seven months ago or something like that. Yeah, and uh, been a while. It, it's always great when a when a guest reaches back to me instead of me having to reach back to a guest. It means that the podcast must have went okay. You must have felt comfortable. I want all my podcasts to feel good for the guest and and, and for them to take something away from it. So uh, I was very uh, flattered that you that you reached back to me. So thanks for doing that, buddy. Hey, Mike. You know. It all goes back to the loyalty of yeah. the tough one house, man. <laughs> yeah. Come on, dude. You, We're like brothers. Who am I? Who, who am I gonna give a, a give the podcast to? Who am I gonna give the interview to? My old roommate. Come on, yeah, of course. Dude. That's right. Man, shit, we old roommates. That's true. That's true, brother. That's true. Um, but man, you, know, you even got though, even though even though I am the last man standing, but uh, you never I know. I kind of you, hate you're that. Looking man. Good. I've been following you on IG. Um, you definitely got a lower body fat percentage than me. So, you know, you, you might be making that comeback fight and you could still be the last man. Standing. I couldn't though. You know, the funny thing is people don't realize like, you know, it's like I look, I guess what you would call better than when I was a fighter, but it's like, that's not what it's about. Like, you know what I mean? Like I couldn't fight to the level I fought when I was fighting looking like this. I'm fighting for aesthetics. Oh. You know what I'm saying? I'm fighting to look oh, good, aesthetic. to feel aesthetic. good, to be yeah. strong, to, to 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 promote my gym at 41 years old. If I can look good at 41 years old and people say, wow, you know, he's 41 years old. He's looking good. I want to go train like he's training. That sells my gym, you know, and obviously it's true. You know, I'm training at my gym, so it's not a, a lie or anything. So, you know, it, it's aesthetic for me. It's, it, it's, it's, uh, I'm training for myself or my body, but if I was in competition, I couldn't train this way. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't train the same way and I'd, I'd have to train differently and I wouldn't look near the same. So, uh, that, that's the difference. So when people tell me like, oh, you look like you should be fighting again, or you know, you're, you're in good shape. Like the UFC fighters are better. It's like, I'm not really, I'm not really in good shape. I'm just, you know, I, I, I'm, uh, aesthetically in shape. But, uh, man, you, you got a big fight coming up, man. And, and what a hell of a fight. 94 fights between you guys, Donald Cerrone and you. And you wanted this fight. Like, you wanted this to be a retirement fight. Like, what a hell of a retirement fight, bro. Well, you know, um, you look great, Mike, by the way. Thank you. And uh, congratulations on all your success. And um, Thank you, sir. your gym is awesome. And um, if you need to get some fitness in, you're 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 carrying the torch in, in a great way and i'm proud of you thank you sir um as far as donald cerrone and uh, this cowboy fight this retirement fight yeah man um shit you know it wasn't easy to get you know um, really? How, how'd that go my manager i had to have my manager go to go to war with uh with shelby oh really and um we we had we put we had to put our foot down and and um hold our ground and and um you know, it was, it was, it was, it was a tough fight to get, you know, we, we, at first we had a, we got a list of guys, uh, you know, 
And all I wanted was a, a real true name for this last fight. You know, I, I put a lot of time in the octagon and, and I wanted to fight someone who had some, some uh, credentials and who somebody who also, you know, has um, been in there and has some miles on the body right. and, and um, who better than Donald it's Cowboy a fight. Cerrone? Yeah. You know, this guy is obviously one of the most dangerous fighters in the game with the most finishes in UFC history. Yeah. Yeah. This guy has obviously been there a long time with the most fights in UFC history. Yeah. Come on. I'm the guy with the longest reigning UFC contract. Yeah. Three career. You know what I mean? <laughs> you keep like, throwing I in my face. Longest, longest, <laughs> longest active career, you know, with no breaks. Yeah. And so I I'm the second perfect, longest. It's a perfect. It's a perfect matchup. I'm only one year older than him. Yeah. I'm one year older than him. We both have a ton of fights, you know, um, I believe he's been been knocked out more than double me, but um, it's um, it's a great fight. It makes for a great a great fight for the fans. And for and um, hold on one second, we got we got Starbucks. Yeah, you know? let me get. Uh, uh, that's priority, brother. Bobby is on the Starbucks. Uh, just a cold brew, just a cold brew. Which nitro? Let me get the nitro. Cold Luckily, brew. we got Starbucks here as well. That's one. Of, that's one of the few nice things uh, chains from America that we yeah. do have. We don't have a lot of good food here from like America, but like I wish we had Cheesecake Factory, In and Out, like all the all the good shit. But we do have Starbucks. All right, ten seventeen. Yeah. So Thanks. with this cowboy fight, yeah, man, I'm I'm hell of excited, man. Um, you know, it, it's not only a a legendary last man standing old Wild West cowboy fight. You know what it is? Hey, what's up, it's buddy? It's a New Mexico. It's a New Mexico fight. Let me tell you this. You know, back in the day, there was this fighter. His name was Johnny Tapia. He was yep. a boxing legend. Mm -hmm. You know, the Mi Vida Loca. We'll get into that. And then he had Danny Romero, who was also from Albuquerque. And they had this legendary fight where these two guys, you know, local fighters, two local fighters fighting for the fighting for all, all of it in, in yeah. one big fight. Well, this is very similar in this fashion because Cowboy, he's on the he's on the east side of the mountain. He's living in Edgewood. I'm Albuquerque, born and raised, native, and you know it's we're gonna throw down and yeah. and this is gonna be a New Mexico fight. I'm fighting for Albuquerque, he's fighting for Edgewood, and uh, you know I have a lot I have a lot of pride going into this fight. Um, I put a lot of hard work in. This has been a, a long training camp. Um, at the end of this training camp will be 90 days, wow. about 90 days, a good three months yeah. of just hard work, sacrifice, dedication. And um, things are going good, man. I was a bit surprised. What did you think about? Um, I mean, he's on a four fight win, uh, four fight loose skid, and then he had no contest. But they were against tough opponents. I'll give him that. Um, I was a little surprised when he he looked at this fight as like a highlight for himself. He, he seemed to have put you. He gave you respect in in regards to your past, saying that ten years ago you were tough. Now it's going to be a highlight tape. How do you feel about that coming from Donald, considering he is kind of old, too? He has been through the ringer. He's had more fights than you. And uh, to say something like that to you, especially when you're, you know, you're winning, you, you've won a few of your last fights. Uh, I don't know if your last five, you won two or three of them. Um, how, how do you feel about that when he says something like that to you? Does that motivate you or do you think he's just promoting the fight or do you think he really believes it? Because you're a hell well, of a fight. You know, uh, Mike. I've already been motivated for this last fight because like all the fighters who fight for so long, man, we have the ups, we have the downs. Um, we make our mistakes. Um, you know, we, we, we take the shortcuts yeah. and we, 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 you know, we do things that we shouldn't do. Like being on your phone till fucking 11, 30, yeah. 12 at night, you know, scrolling, yeah. you know, down to, you know, waking up late and just being lazy sometimes. But um, for this fight, man, I, I was already motivated to really, truly just uh, capture the inner champion in myself and put in a whole different level of discipline and sacrifice. I was already planning to do this for this last fight because my last showing in the UFC with Jake Matthews, yeah. um, you know, I, to be honest with you, I, I saw what was happening with COVID. 
And I reached out to Dana White and I was like, man, you know, I need to get this last fight before, you know, I don't even know if UFC is going to last through this COVID yeah. with other sports like NFL and, and NBA and, and Major League Baseball shutting down. I was like, man, UFC might shut down. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to get a last fight. Yeah. So I uh, took a fight on five weeks notice. Um, you know, I, I jumped off the couch from, you know, not training at all. Yeah. And. You know, I, I took a fight on five weeks notice, got in the best shape I could. I went out there, took a, what, a week of travel to Abu Dhabi and um, I fought my best, you know, and yeah. I didn't get finished. You know, I went in there. I, I draw I drew blood on on Jake Matthews, too. You know, it wasn't my best performance, but um, I, I, I know that I can perform a lot better than that Jake Matthews fight. So with self-motivation for this last and final retirement fight. I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta put everything I have into this last one, and um, with Cowboy talking all this mess that <laughs> I'm not the legend and I'm just gonna be another highlight on his highlight reel. Um, yeah, it added extra motivation for me to be like, all right, you want to take me, take me, take me lightly, take me lightly because I'm the wrong guy to do that. This is the wrong time to do this in my career, right? Because honestly. Um, I, I'm feeling better than I ever have. It's been um, three hard, long years working with Joshua Fabia yep. on revamping my whole entire style, you know, to learn how to defend myself and strike properly. But, um, yeah, so, no, man, I'm super, super excited, super excited for this cowboy fight. And, and uh, yeah, I'm motivated as hell, man. I want to go out there and kick his ass. You know, I want to take it to him. I want to bring the fight to him. And, and you know, when you are training for your retirement fight, you just take shit more seriously. Yeah. Because you know, you know this is going to be your last time that you make the walk. You know this is going to be the last time your feet touch the canvas. You know, you know this is the last time you're going to hear uh, Bruce Buffer saying the nightmare. You know what I mean? Yeah, you yeah. know this. You feel this. And, and, and it, it just brings a level of importance to what you're the the task at hand and man for him to for him to not take me seriously maybe he is i don't know but um i look at i'm looking at him like a legend yeah i, I think he is a legend yeah, but you both and are. uh cowboy um you are a legend cowboy i i respect you like a legend and i know you are dangerous and that is why i'm taking this fight camp so tremendously serious yeah. you know i have uh, you know i it's 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 been been zero 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 you know zero anything for me man yeah. I, I had a great match with 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 jake shields yeah and in high rollers and um my grappling is on i've been working hard on my striking i came down here to american top team which is in my opinion the best team here in the united states yep for uh for striking for mixed martial arts and and i'm just working with a bunch of other legends and um i'm feeling great things are going good i just want to say the, the cool thing about this fight is not only did i want to see this fight many times before i mean it's a great fight at any time in your career um you're both legends so it's like it doesn't matter records it doesn't matter you've all you've you've put your time in and you're in the same place that's what i like about it you know what i mean like so it doesn't matter you've all fought the best you've all had great wins you, you took some tough losses. So it doesn't matter about records and where you're at in your career right now. This is still an epic fight no matter what against two legends of the sport that are just badass hardcore fighters. So I'm definitely, uh, I'm definitely excited about it. Um, I, I guess I want to ask you a two-part question here. Um, it sounds like you're 100% retired um, after this fight. So the question is, are you 100% retired no matter what? And then the second part is, uh, Why? What would what? I mean, obviously, things come into factor when you decide to retire. Maybe you feel like you you can't fight like you used to, or maybe it's just a goal you set for yourself. Whatever the case, if you are 100% reti retired, why why would you uh, retire at this time? Yeah, well, there's a lot of things that 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 play into my decision in making this decision. Um, first of all, um, you know, like there's got to be life after after UFC right. after the fighting. You know, and for me, you know, I started UFC at the age of, of, of 21, yeah, you know, so, young. so I've been living this life for a long time. I, I went into the tunnel with with a lot of light and, um, you know, I'm coming towards the end of the tunnel. I see the light at the end of the tunnel 
and I want to do this and achieve this, man, and and be able to to come out of the tunnel healthy. Yeah, you know, and and so a lot of this is me taking brain health awareness, okay. being real, and uh, just not being delusional or in denial about the wars I've been in. Yeah. Not being delusional and denial about the head trauma that I've taken in this career, you yeah. know. So, you know, when it comes to a fighter, usually we're like, oh, no, it ain't me, man. I'm cut from a different cloth. Yeah, man. I'm I'm, I'm that conquistador blood. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, no, like you, you got to be real with yourself, you know, and have understanding and be like, you know, man, like I got to I, I got to get out of this sport healthy. Yeah. As far as other competitive things go yeah i will probably still continue to do grappling i will probably look into some probably maybe some exhibition boxing matches um who knows what 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 the cards hold right i have a a big role that i got cast for in uh mickey rourke film yep. where i will be playing um uh, playing johnny tapia in the mi vida loca yep. movie I'm gonna so get into that um, in that's minute. gonna be a big aspiration for me to to dial in how I'm gonna remember these lines and and yeah. and and pr pull out this acting career, you know, yeah. that I, I look forward to doing. Um, there's many many things that that I have to do, you know. Um, I got I got that going on, and and um, you know I'm excited to do it. But there is still that one fight that I wish I could have with Conor McGregor, yeah. you know. Maybe maybe later down the line we do a boxing match. I don't know. You know, we'll see what things happen. You know, we'll see how things unfold in this yeah. in this this dream career that I've been able to to uphold. Seems like nowadays you just got to sell it. It's got to make a bunch of heat and, and and talk a lot of shit and make it entertainment. That seems to be what's working for these YouTube guys, Ben Askren and Jake Paul and and Logan Paul fighting Mayweather and all this stuff. It seems to be all about hype. So maybe that's something you should do after after you get done. But absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's it's become so much of the entertainment factor. So much. And, um, you know, I've always been a character. Yeah. And so, you know, some people love me, some people hate me, but I am entertaining. I am entertaining. You can't deny the entertaining factor is there. I've been putting on these bloody battles and putting myself in the line of fire for a long time. And um, at the end of my career, I want to just skate out clean man yeah. skate out clean with a clean victory over donald cerrone and we'll see what happens next you know you know the cards the cards the cards you never know what the cards are going to be yeah you know and you know i of course i i visualize a great victory but we as you and i both know yeah never this know. sport is a you don't know what's yep. going to happen you know one of us might end up in the hospital yeah and that's the truth of this brutal sport What's up, everybody? I am here in Thailand. This is the first time I've ever been here. Been dying to come here for years. Mike Swick, he's one of the big reasons he's been trying to pull me down here. What he built down here, AKA Thailand, is incredible. There's people here from all over the world. You can train mixed martial arts here, jujitsu. They have weightlifting, they have cardio, and obviously they have Muay Thai, boxing, everything. telling you guys I know everybody wants to go to Thailand because Thailand's so cool but you can't come to Thailand without coming to aka Thailand come on you said this is gonna be your, your retirement fight 100% um, do you have any regrets and your career I mean is there anything that you're leaving uh, regretful from your career as, as far as fighting and I know you wanted the the Connor fight but is there any other regrets you've had that 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 you know or good memories let's, let's go both good and bad from your career if this is your last fight and you walk away do you have anything memorable that's good or bad that, that maybe uh, you regret that you could have had or that you're just thankful that you did have um, you know that's a great question Mike um, of course there's gonna be a lot of regrets man yeah, of course you know um, I regret just, uh, you know, lying to myself, you know, doing things that I shouldn't be doing, 
being unaware and um, believing believing the hype, you know, yeah. believing the hype of 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 what a UFC um, fame is, right. you know, and um, the real true reality of being a professional athlete, a UFC fighter, having all these fans and uh the, the fake internet and yeah. and all this stuff man just just being more real with myself if i could if i could go back i w- I, I just would like to look back at myself and be like man i wish i could have been more real more honest with myself less than de- less delusional in the dream that i had yeah. you know the you know like oh man my dream was i'm a god-given champion and my god-given destiny i'm gonna be the ufc champion right. and yeah that 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 delusional dream did push me to do things that other human beings were less capable of doing and 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 still to this day people are like man you're such an inspiration you know yeah. like you took you know you took those hits and you did things that that like man I, other people would quit right and but now that i look back on it and you know it's 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 17 years later i've been doing this ufc for that long that i'm like man you know i just wish i would have been a little more honest with myself or should have been a little more real i think i would have had some better results you know and um but 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 in the end i i uh, man i really truly am blessed um you know i i i found a uh, found a great um great coach in the end yeah. for the final run um, a friend and a mentor the, in Joshua Fabia to help guide me through this end of the road. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm doing it with people that really, truly care about me. You know, I, I don't have no fake snakes around me. Good. And um, to be honest with you, Mike, this will be, you know, the first fight training camp, first fight ever in my life that I do, you know, 100% free of any supplements you know like wow. uh, my whole career i had a, a serious supplement addiction and um you know you remember i yeah. remember i took the bag into the ultimate fighter yeah. house with all the supplements yeah. and you're like man those supplements, they so work many. you know they do but but uh this time um it's gonna just be me man yeah. nothing for recovery no probiotics for my digestion no essential fatty acids for my brain no man i'm just doing it on just food water sleep rest and hard work and um uh, it's gonna be the real true soul inside of me the real true spirit of confidence that um that leads me to, into this battle and so you know I'm, I'm i'm just excited to to be able to do this for once um with no help like you know this is the yeah. this is the real true true diego the essence of diego sanchez is going into the octagon on may 8th and uh, I'm excited as hell to fight Cowboy Cerrone, man. Um, you know, he's he's obviously thinking I'm just going to be a highlight reel <laughs> on his record. But um, if he hasn't seen the fights that I've been in in my entire career, man, I'm I'm not an easy man to put down. And um, you better believe your uh, you better believe it and bet your ass that um, I'm coming in the best shape of my life. I'm coming with in the best health of my life. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm closing the show right. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of fighters don't get that opportunity. Right. A lot of fighters don't get the opportunity to finish strong. On their end. terms. You know, most fighters, they, they start good. They, 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 they fall down, they get back up. They fall down, they get back up, just like I did many, many times. But then in the end, they get, they get shut out. Yeah. They get shut down by the young guns. Yeah. And in my last five fights, I fought four 26 year olds <laughs> that outsized me um you know they, they they were young hungry and very talented you know michelle yeah. piera jake matthews these guys are young and, and hungry you know you the only one that wasn't 26 was was uh michael chiesa and yeah. michael chiesa you know he's he's a, he's a great fighter i think he's number five or six yeah. in in the rankings and so you know i'm i'm just i'm excited to go out there and uh, and finish finish my career on on a high note yeah finish my career on a high note and um give the fans one last one last taste of diego sanchez and you know i want it to be the best me and so i'm putting it all in man yeah. I'm putting it all in and 
and and like like Donald, I got my injuries. Like 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 all the older fighters, man. We've been through the grinder. Yeah. We got the miles on the body, but uh, my mind is sharp. My eyes are focused. My my vision is clear. Yeah. And um, I'm excited, man, because it's cool. gonna be just the 100% Diego Sanchez. Man, you just had so many fights, so many wars. You've proven yourself so many times, and and now you're coming out here fighting this guy. I mean, it's it's gonna be such an incredible fight. I, I can't wait to watch it myself. Um, and and a good point that you made earlier is that you know ufc fighters just like entertainers i think in general a lot of actors and entertainers you know for the guys coming up and watching the podcast that are, that are chasing the fame and chasing the money and chasing the highlights and they want to be world champions because somehow they think if they get to that level they're going to be their life's going to change forever it's not the case and and, and you know you it's not, it's not the case so you know, they're chasing these things like this fame because you do get famous. You got famous. We all got famous, right? It was amazing. And, and, and you feel like you're on top of the world, but it ends just as fast as it comes. You know, you have to maintain that. And then eventually it will drop off. You're going to get older. You're going to, you know, so it's tough. And it's a good point that you made because like a lot of these guys chasing just the fame and the stardom and the riches, they're going to have to understand that, like you said, you have to have something set up after fighting because if you don't, it is going to drop off 100 percent you know unless you unless you're very very one of the rare rare fighters that can make it to the very very top and be a champion for a long period of time and make an enormous amount of money and then how many is that yes. how many is that you know yeah, so that, it, it, it's it's maybe one out of a hundred it's, uh, it's, it's a very small amount and uh, you know the truth of it is you know there ain't that much money in this sport. So, yeah, you might get some fame. You might get some fake followers on IG. <laughs> but, um, you know, it ain't it ain't what it all adds up to, you know. Just got to maximize know, you, you, it. you got to sacrifice a lot of things to yep. get that, yep. you know. And, um, yeah, I, I live with some regrets. But um, I'm happy to be here and speak my voice of truth to the youth in the end because, you know, they need to hear it. And yeah. they, need, they need to know, you know, like, like this ain't, you know. This ain't the, the, the joy ride that you think it is, man. You're going to have some pain and suffering along the way because, believe me, I, um, I've sacrificed, man. I've sacrificed family. I've sacrificed friends. I've sacrificed relationships. I've sacrificed a marriage. I've sacrificed many, many things for this first love that was the UFC. And like I told you, the delusional dream that I was going to be UFC gold belt on oh, my baby going to sleep with you, you know, no, you know, um, life, life is first, you know, and, and, um, you know, you gotta, you gotta take it for what it is, man, you know, be, be smart, be aware. And, um, you know, like you said, plan your future, yeah. you know, spend your time and your energy with your loved ones, you know, do that, you know, take, take the time to take your little girl to the park, you yeah. know, take the time to, to do what you got to do not just dream dream not just this dream of of, yeah. of winning and victory because what it is 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 when you get in there and you feel that Diego, 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 Diego. And, and 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 they and, and bruce buffer and it's in the yeah. nightmare and they're holding your hand up and you're re releasing all these chemicals in your brain man and 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 it's addicting you know you become an addict you become an addict for that feeling of oh man you know like you know i'm famous and and i'm and i'm victorious and 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 it's and, and, and don't get me wrong it is a great feeling but it's not the only feeling that you need to to chase in life and there is a lot of other ways to find these great chemicals that are in our body that we can release you know yeah. and um you know be healthy yeah, yeah, and we've seen even guys in our generation actually have belts. They made it to championship level and still fell off. You know what I mean? They still they still uh, didn't hold their belt long enough or make enough money and, and, and kind of fell off a little bit, you know, and, and they're not, not so popular anymore. So Absolutely. it doesn't so mean guys, if you become so a champion, guys, you're going to be you set know, for life. You you become a champion and then, you know, you're still, you're still chewed up and spit out at the end. You got to make something for yourself afterwards and think about it. It's the number one thing for sure. Absolutely. And it's a good thing that you're doing that as well. Um, for this training camp, yeah. are you doing anything? Just, just one last question about the, the Cerrone fight. Um, on this training camp, are you doing anything different uh, or changing up anything with Joshua or whoever um, for this fight? I know you mentioned a couple yeah. things, but is there anything specific that you're training, uh, changing up or are you just 
Just training for everything? Yeah, um, you know, um, I have been um, been working with uh, Luis Palomino, man. Um, he's a great help. Um, Eric El, El Tigre Castanos, uh, man, down in Miami. He's just helping me uh, put together uh, the, my striking um, on the mitts. And uh, he's the only one that Joshua has uh, proved of to hold the mitts for me. And the reason why Joshua don't hold the mitts for me is because he's 5'2". It's, it's, at a, it's at a lower angle. You know, I got to have someone bring in the punches at the right shoulder, shoulder level. You know, there's, there's a lot of things that we're doing for this camp. We got a we got a lot of a lot of secret weapons that we're we're bringing. We got oh yeah we got to we got to work with Dustin Dustin Poirier man we got yeah. some great work with Dustin. Um, you know there's a lot of lot of lot of secret weapons that we're bringing in this in this fight and and um, we're excited man we're excited to show it all. We don't want to give our game plan right, away. You know the game plan obviously is to go in there and just perform. Yeah man you know it's it's about performance. Going in there and 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 knowing that this is the last time, and zero hesitation, zero hesitation, going in there and doing what I gotta do, and I gotta have the confidence. I gotta I gotta let all the doubt go, and have the confidence in my conditioning, the confidence in my training, the confidence in the discipline that I put in for these ninety days of training. Yeah, and and where i'm at man i just got old school with it man i just got old school with it i'm in the best shape of my life i i i could easily continue to fight if i wanted to right um right now it looks like like being an ambassador for brain health awareness and stepping into another role is going to be the best thing for me you know i work with joshua and school of self-awareness so this will be, um, uh, you know, a big thing that I'll be working on after after my career with the UFC. But um, you know, it's it, I, I'm I'm not closing all doors to combat combative sports anymore. You know, like if, if something opens up and and I have a huge opportunity, I am still a man that is surviving in a grimy world. You know, yeah. this is a grimy world we're living in right now. You know, and and I got a daughter. I got a mom and a mama and a papa and you know, so I'll do what I got to do for them and for myself. Yeah. So, you know, we, we're just, uh, we're just excited for, for the moment at hand and I'm going to take it a uh, breath for breath, moment for moment. And uh, I'm excited to go to, to the apex and, and put on a great performance on ESPN in front of millions and millions of fans who have been following me since the ultimate fighter. Yeah. You know, you know, through through the Clay Guida fights, through the through the BJ Pan fights, through through the Martin Catmans, through the Gilbert Melendezes, man, you know, through the Nick Diazes, you know, I've been in so many amazing, amazing battles, yeah. man, where my face has been hanging off. Yeah. You know, here I am at the end of the career. I might look like a little Frankenstein, but um, I, I I'm a sexy Frankenstein, right? Yeah, ah. Yes, you are. <laughs> So I was going to also ask you about the um, the Sterling knee. I mean, that that is also familiar familiar to you. You took a yeah, knee yeah, as well. Yeah, that's a good topic. That's what did you What did you think about that in, as compared topic. to your situation as well? Like, what what are your thoughts? Yeah, man. Um, it's a part of the sport, man. Um, I was I was surprised and and in the reaction of of how how people um, just get so crazy about it because I got kneed in the head. A year ago, yep. it was about a year ago, and um, my the knee that I took to the head was down to the bone, down yeah. man, down to my skull. Yeah. Like my, I, like I got, I got video. I'll, I'll post some video content, man. It was down to the skull. It was, it was some serious, serious head trauma that I took, you yeah. know. And and I think that um, there has to be a real education in these referees to know that when someone takes a blow like that. You know, they got to they got to be in They're the they're the they're the one that's in power right in that moment to to take care of the fighter. That's the job of the referee. You know, I could, you know, you, you, you in there and they're in there asking me, do you want to continue? Do you want to continue? You know, after you take a, a head blow like that, you know, you're not in the right mind. Right. To even that's what I'm thinking. Answer yeah. Answer a question. Like yeah. That. It's a, why and, ask the fighter? Uh, 
And then the same thing, man, uh, Brock Weaver, man, the same night that I took the blow, Brock Weaver took a blow. Man, I was talking to him the other day. He was like, he was like, man, I took that blow to the head. Um, I went home after that fight. He said, uh, my head was killing me. He mm. said, I, I, he said, I, I didn't know what to do. He said, I, I didn't even go to the hospital. And he's like, I had to take, I, I was telling my, my wife, like, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be all right. Um, right. He had sustained a real concussion, Yeah, you know? And so there has to be uh, added measures to protect the fighters because this is the most dangerous sport there is. And, and we got to take care of the fighters. You know, this is, this is the truth, man. We got, you know, if we're going to entertain the fans with, with our bodies, you know, being sacrificed, being, being taking these impacts, these traumas, then, you know, we got to be taken care of, you know, by the organization, by the company, by the medical, like it, 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 there needs to be some changes made in, in, in this area of, of the sport as the sport continues to evolve and become more dangerous as these these young guns man they're more athletic their their striking abilities are they're, they're acrobatic their their striking abilities continue to evolve their 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 um, their their accuracy continues to get sharper and sharper and you know like look at Sanhagen man throws one knee and man Frankie's down like that man yeah. like this is some serious. This is a serious, serious sport we're in, and um, I'm. I, I just think that brain health awareness needs to be taken to the next level. We, there needs to be a higher level of 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 scan, scanning and testing, and and uh, I think that there needs to be more um, of the financial money that is being made off of us and 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 uh, what 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 we're putting at risk to put be put back into to just taking care of us, you know, yeah. taking care of, of, you know, whether it's, it's, it's brain health facilities, whether it's, it's paying for the medical that costs more, the scans that cost more, just, I think there has to be another, uh, uh, another level to this because the fighters are, are, are leveling up in how they are, are performing. And uh, so do the doctors, the doctors yeah. and the medicals, they need to level up in how they're performing also. There's got to be a level of like, if it's a, like if it looks like it, it just barely scathed the head or something or it's minor, I can understand maybe then ask the fighter. I think more importantly, ask the corner. Um, but like when you take a direct knee to the head, I and mean, we've seen what happened with like Ben Askren and some other, you know, Frankie and stuff like that. That's a that's a bone. I mean, it, it's not even like football when you got two helmets hitting and they're getting CTE from that. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's two protective helmets hitting. It's a it's a le legitimate bone, a huge bone hitting the head. It's, it's it's traumatic, right? And then to take the absolutely to take to make the fighter make the call when he's like concussed possibly is is a silly thing uh if he continues or doesn't continue and if he doesn't continue i think it's crazy when the fans jump on like i know you you probably took a little criticism for not continuing everybody oh, does man, i took i took but, so much but how it was, it was it was it was it was hard man let me tell you um i was in the hospital after the piano fight i had two broken ribs and man um joshua is looking at my ig and he's like what the hell they're yeah. they're, they're roasting me it's crazy. man thousands and thousands of these fake profiles just putting clown 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 you're a clown you're a chicken it's you're crazy. a clown you're a chicken you're a clown you're a chicken and man this ain't good for any anybody man you know like you know you go out there you go and you perform you 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 do your part you get in there you put your health your life on the risk and you know you got these people um i don't know who they are or what they are they might be uh they might be some bots. Yeah. They might be a, a, a new computer program <laughs> because when I've looked them up, they, they, they don't look to be real accounts. Yeah. And as, as you know, and I know, I'm sure they've offered to sell you followers on Instagram, right? Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. Every day. Yeah. Right. They, yeah. Yeah. They, they, they offered me all the time. Uh, you know, I'll sell you, sell you uh 20,000 for, 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 for five grand, you know, or, or, or I don't know what, you know, they offer it to me all the time. Yeah. But the truth of it is, there's a lot of fake on the internet. And the internet ain't so much real. You got to ignore it, man. And I got to give a shout out to to my only fans, which is a verified account, a verified internet, where it's really me. 
You yeah. know, it's not an it's not a sexual thing. It's a non sexual. It's <laughs> real content. It's all my behind the scenes content, and these are real fans, real people. You know, they they are verified themselves, and like any dating site, it is it is verified, and so you know, um, things got to change. The world is living in an illusion, and there's many Wizard of Oz's playing puppets. You know. Yeah. And either you're a puppet or you're a string or you're, you know, or you're a wizard. Yeah. And uh, I'm just trying to not be a puppet. Yeah. So in the OnlyFans thing, explain that a little bit. So um, I'm not familiar with it. A lot of it's used for more of the sexual type stuff. So what it, what is it that they get when they join your OnlyFans for you specifically? Oh, man. Oh, dude, you got to go check it out, bro. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really awesome. You got... Uh, tons of stuff man we got meditations we got lives we got trainings cool. we got behind the scenes man interactions with the fans man there's there's so much stuff that that there's there's infinite infinite possibilities you know i'm i'm, I'm on there talking to my fans i'm on there communicating i'm you know the real fans they deserve this yeah. you know and uh it, it takes some time but but in the end it it, it 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 it's a good thing man because you know make a little money yeah you know and everyone's happy how many yeah. how many fans you got oh yeah yeah um 90 000 subscriptions wow. in three months damn so that goes to show you that in the what i think nine billion people on this planet there's so many people right now and everybody's on their phone man you know, yeah. in a worldwide pandemic, everyone's on the internet. The internet has gone crazy. There is that many people out there. And so you got to be aware and be careful because either you're living in the fake or you're living in the real. Right. And so I'm telling you people, man, check out OnlyFans. I'm, I'm, I'm right here with this OnlyFans shirt yeah. because I'm trying to legitimize the non-sexual OnlyFans because... OnlyFans was created really for fans to connect with their celebrities. Right. And and so it wasn't created for a, a porno site, you know. Right. It's just some girls, they found a way to use it in, in a way that they could monetize themselves. And to each is their own. I ain't judging on nobody. <laughs> uh, but that ain't, my, that ain't my role. That's not what I'm doing. Yeah. But uh, I know that only fans as a company and a, as, a, as a brand as uh as the ceo roy is a good friend of mine um yeah no it's 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 a it's a solid company it's a solid network and um you need to get on here now while you can because once the internet gets exposed to what is really going on with the fakeness with the lies with the deception with the illusion that is is happening with yeah. with the power four and it's gonna happen yeah it's, it will happen it's it's gonna be exposed it's only a matter of time and um people are gonna need a verified network that they can trust and only fans is gonna be one of them that's for sure cool man awesome i want to ask you a couple of things uh, a lot more about you but real fast just uh i want to get your opinion on the tj Corey fight it's going to be on your card as well what do you think about that uh, him coming back and then fighting Corey? um yeah no man um i i think Corey's a a, a killer man and um and uh tj's coming off of a a really long layoff and so i think it's a it's still a brilliant matchup it's a brilliant matchup. Um, I'm sure TJ's thinking, I don't know, man, maybe I should do some wrestling for this fight. Yeah. But, um, you know, he's a, he's a brilliant striker himself yeah. and, um, and, 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 and a champion. So um, it's, it's, it's going to be a great fight. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be the co-main event. And uh, I'm, looking to, I'm looking to steal the show. You know, nice. I'm looking to get in there and steal the show on ESPN. And put on such a performance that puts the pressure on these guys to fight even harder. I've been doing it my whole career with a big heart and a you know a corazón full of fire. Yeah. And uh, you know so, it, it, but I I I I I don't know. I I think I'm gonna go with um, with Sanhagen. I'm okay. gonna take Sanhagen. I think he's gonna pull it off, man. I think he's he has confidence. Is is surging. Yeah. I think he's he's in the in the rhythm 
of his career where he's took those little bit of losses in the beginning. He's found himself as a fighter. And I think that TJ's kind of just coming back, trying to find himself. And I think he's just a, a should have got a little bit of a, a lower level of, of competition before this comeback fight, right. you know, just to build himself up. But we'll see what happens. I'm excited for it. All right, guys, do you want to save 20%? and get free shipping on the best below the waist grooming products on the market, Manscaped. Go to manscaped.com, M-A-N-S-C-A-P-E-D.com, enter code QUICK, my nickname, not how you actually use the products, and you get 20% off and free shipping. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels, and now they are released in Europe, Canada, and Australia. So if you're in any of those countries, you can order from manscaped.com, use code QUICK, save 20%, and get free shipping, and support the podcast. And being a tough one brother of mine, Tough's coming back. I think it's uh, 29 or something like that. They're doing, I think, 135, 185, if I'm correct on that. Uh, what do you think about the, the, the show coming back? And uh, for first, I'll just ask you that. What, what do you think about the show coming back? Oh, man. Um, you know, um, I'll always be a supporter of Tough, you know, and you know, like it, um, it was a great opportunity for me and uh, it's been a great opportunity for many. Um, uh, I'm, I'm sure it'll I'm sure it'll be a be a success. Um, I hope that they get some some good energy in there and, and the, the right uh, characters and, and with charisma and um you know i hope they really do it right because you know they there for a while they were just were doing it so often yeah. i think twice a year yeah and um they just they kind of got the the rush on it yeah so you know it's it's had a good little bit of a break and uh, i think they're really working on um on doing it right for this 29th season have you heard who the coaches are going to be i uh, know and and I, I, I'm no. trying to find out because I want to do a podcast about it, but I don't know right now. Do you know? Um, I don't know, but um, the rumor that I heard was uh, Masvidal and Colby. But oh wow, um, you know, Masvidal will have to to win this fight. You know, win this fight with Usman, and um, yeah. that would be a great a great show. I think the chemistry would be good. So you said doing it right. What what if you were the boss of Tough Twenty Nine and you set everything up? and it was all in charge of you, um, what would you do different that's, uh, that's not been done before to try to make a better tough show? Being that you were on season one and then you've seen the, I'm going to say decline because we're the best show ever, tough one. Um, but since tough one till now, what, what would you do differently on this season to try to make it better? Um, I would just uh, bring in more people like um, outside characters, outside specialists, and I would allow the the I wouldn't go with so much the team thing because man I I remember just Randy Couture was my hero when I went in there and I would have loved to get some work with Randy and I never got to I never got to work with him I never got to spend time with him and learn from him like I like I like I I I I should have you know and I I feel like they should uh, diversify the 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 team standing and make it more individualized to where it's more of an individual competition and you have coaches coming in and and you know just different specialties and you know i i, I would like to see like the individuals be be highlighted more and um not so much the team you know and, right. and make it more like a bracket I would like to see like a bracket, a like, you know, more of a bracket style of, um, you know, like a tournament, yeah. you know, like I would like to see more of like a tournament type of style, you know, that's how I would do it. And on tough one, uh, I mean, not that there's any negative, but do you have any regrets that you would have taken back from tough one? And then what are your fondest memories of tough one? Oh man. Oh shit. The, the number one, the number one regret would be just not going to that strip club on the last night yeah. with Dana White to, to the Cheetah Strip Club. That would be the yeah. number one regret that I have. <laughs> I would have just said, "Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just stay home. I'm yeah. cool. I want to just go home, you know, and not drinking all that, all that booze." Maybe that would have been a good you know? idea. Yeah, that was. 
Yeah, that was a little. You too got much a lot of publicity, after. though. You got a lot of publicity. But um, hey, hey, you know, you when you when you're young and you're dumb, you know, you you do some stuff that to try to have fun. And um, we had a we had a, we had a we had a good show, we man. Did. We had a great show. And in the end, um, it wasn't about the regrets, man. It was about the the friends and the relationships yeah. that 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 we were able to make. You know, the opportunities and. Um, really pioneer the sport of ufc from you know 60 million dollars in debt to now on the ups of 10 billion you nice. know like seriously you know we were really a, a big factor in 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 the explosion of the sport you know when when the world only knew monday night raw wwe right you know we we, we showed them a, a different uh different reality a, a different form of of truth and yep. in and in, in fighting and you know um i just yeah i it, it was a good show man i i um uh, I, I look back on it man and 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 all that good training I got with Koscheck and yeah. and then how they switched the switched the opponents yeah. in the last episode, man, it, it it was it was crazy, man. It was nuts. And and it's weird that like going from the pro wrestling thing, it's like even though pro pro wrestling was so big and still is, it technically was more violent and more vulgar, even though it wasn't real, than fighting for real, because they were saying such vulgar things together or, or at each other. And oh, there was yeah. blood, and there was all this oh, yeah. carnage, and it was literally more violent and, and more vulgar. You know, come on, you know, the titillation. Then real fighting. You can't forget about the titillation. But it was interesting. Yeah. yeah so. Yeah. Now, um, you look where it is now. The sport has grown, man. To from the Ultimate Fighter to now, we got uh, world champion uh, women's fighters. Yeah. You know, got, absolutely. You know, these these women are going out there and and going to war now, and so. You know, things have changed and uh, things will c continue to change, continue to evolve as um, as the world continues to evolve and change with with, you know, the craziness of the Internet and pandemic and, you know, 2021, man. Yep. You know, shit's getting real. Yeah. And I had Mickey work on the show a while back and he was very excited about an upcoming project with you. I think he's the producer of this film, Mi Vida Loca. Um, yeah, yeah. So tell me about that. Let, let, let's get into that a little bit. Yeah, um, Mickey Rourke, man, a good friend of mine, man. Super um, cool guy, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, a legend himself, yep. man. Um, in the in the movies he's put out from from, Amazing from the actor. wrestler to to Sin City, man. Um, this guy's um, he was a, he was a boxer. He boxed, man. People, a lot of people don't know that. Mickey gave up acting for a while to be a professional boxer and, and man. superstardom and, acting. He was a superstar when he when he went into boxing. Like it was, he did oh, it for the love oh, of oh, boxing. I always, I always get him with this one. Hey, I'm like Mickey. Before there was Brad Pitt, there was Mickey. Rourke. It's true. It's the he was the leading heart, man in the Hollywood. Real, Absolutely, the real heartthrob of America. He was. You, you, you still, you still got heartthrob, Mickey. I love you. He's, he yeah. was. He definitely um, was. Yeah. No, but um, yeah, no. He, he's 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 a big time actor, man. He's he's a legend himself. Uh, you know, he was a great friend with uh, Johnny Tapia, and um, while he was going through a hard time, um, going through a divorce, yeah. he he reached out to Johnny, and Johnny's like. Hey, you know, Mickey, just come to Albuquerque, and and we're gonna we're gonna I'll take care of you, I'll take care of you, and and he said, no, I'll just get on the flight right now and get out here right now, get out here right now, and 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 Mickey listened to him. He came out and and Johnny took him out to the Santuario Church and rubbed the dirt on him and prayed for him, and and after that they were they were they were blood brothers, and uh, Mickey worked the corner for Johnny many times and. And so, yeah, no, I got a, I got a great relationship with Teresa Tapia, uh, Johnny's widow, and uh, and his kids, Johnny Jr. And uh, man, it, I got a great relationship. We, we're we're doing um, Tapia Sanchez promotions. So me and her are doing boxing fights, and and still working on nice. that. You know, it's been been a little hard through pandemic. We haven't been able to really put any shows on. We put one show on in uh, in Mexico, but um, you know it's been a, it's been a real challenge with the, with this with this pandemic and and so and Teresa also will be the co-producer of Mi Vida Loca uh -huh. and uh, big shout out to her. 
I love her. She's an angel, a real true blessing to to my life, and and um, I love her and that her and the Tapia family, Mickey Rourke. We're really excited to do this movie. Um, as you can see, I'm already in character. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm getting ready, and um, I'm I'm gonna go into this fight with Donald Cerrone in the best shape of my life. I'm gonna be shredded. I'm gonna be looking good. Gonna be looking sharp, and gonna gonna give Mickey a little taste of of what 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 Diego Sanchez is going to be as a mi vida look as as we put these hands we can put these hands on Donald Cerrone nice. you know whatever he he thinks you know I don't know what he thinks what he knows but um all I know is that I'm I'm prepared I'm ready and um I'm bringing I'm bringing all the fire to this last oct octagon appearance so you're obviously obviously playing him and, and his life story main role. Is there a lot of pressure with that, being that you're going to be the main character and have to carry out those lines and and the pressure of the whole movie on your shoulders? Oh yeah, there's a lot of pressure, <laughs> and um, this is a real movie that will be a tearjerker, man. Because yeah, of course, if you yeah, do some research life. on Johnny and his life, yeah, um, he lived a, a different type Crazy. of lifestyle. He struggled with uh, addiction, Cocaine, yep. and uh, he lost his mother, mother at the age of seven. And uh, he was he was he was a real he was a real vato man he was a real vato in the streets of Albuquerque, New Mexico, street fighting until the day he was, till the day he died. Yeah. This guy was a real street fighter. Yeah. You know he he even when he was pro boxing, this guy was still always getting in street fights. He was a little guy, um, you know, a small a smaller guy, you know, and and um, a real true legend. But what people don't know about this story is that. I was a little kid in the trailer park with one boxing glove hitting myself in the face like Johnny Tapia saying, I'm Johnny Tapia. I'm Johnny Tapia. And somehow this has manifested into what it is. Wow. Because I grew up following this guy. That's I crazy. grew up idolizing this guy. I grew up wanting to be like him. And and, and I, I remember going with my dad to watch him watch him watch him box at the pit and and just remembering like man it was it was amazing and i was so inspired that you know he was a big part of why i became a fighter wow. and and when i um when i was starting my mixed martial arts career i was two and oh and i had some friends that um they wanted to throw a a, a fight card that was half boxing half mma and and they couldn't really find me an opponent in MMA. And they're like, well, shit, we, you can do a boxing fight if you want to do a boxing fight. I'm like, hell yeah, let me do a boxing fight. <laughs> so I, I reached out to them. They got me the boxing fight. They were friends with Johnny. Yeah. These were the Madrids, John and Ed Madrid from Albuquerque. And, man, they, they, they reached out to Johnny. He drove all the way from one side of town to the other side of town, took the time and the energy out of his day, gave me a private lesson, man. And, you know, he just worked with me on some boxing and he went to my fight. He was up there in the stands nice. throwing punches and, and yelling combos. And, and I went out there and I won out by a second round knockout. Nice. I, I knocked the guy second round. And, and so, so I have done boxing before. I'm excited to, do the boxing training for the film i've already started and after this after this movie you know um i may do a boxing fight you nice. know like with all these exhibition yeah, fights and a lot of them. and um you know oscar de la hoya just uh, just announced that that he's gonna come back on july 3rd man shit oh, wow. man i would love to jump in there and, and be his opponent you know, wow. but um, we'll see what happens, man. Like I said, man, I'm I'm keeping all the doors open. I'm healthy. I'm happy, and um, you know, I'm working hard with um, with Joshua Fabia, and and we're working on School of Self Awareness on, on the daily. And so, please give us a follow on the OnlyFans. Give us a follow on the Instagram. School of Self Awareness Worldwide dot com is the website, and uh, check out the online course. You know, we we got the online courses. The online course is up, and um, this is where the world is going with this internet, man. You gotta be ready to be online, you know. And so we have the online course available for purchase, 
And it's a totally online everything. You get to work with Joshua one on one. Yeah. It's the closest thing to being able to have him right here by your side. Yeah. Like I have him by my side all the time. Yeah. You know, What's up, buddy? people try to people try to come against us, you know, the internet, you know. But um we're the real and we're here speaking the real, speaking the truth, you know, and uh, giving that love and that light to the world the way we can. And so, you know, this is a big reason why I'm stepping out of the combat, you know, stepping out of the UFC, stepping into another area. And I think that all fighters, like you said, need to be ready for when they step outside of the octagon because some of these fighters, you know, are chewed up, spit out, and have uh, serious traumas to deal with afterwards. And only ones that they have to help them is is their wife and um you know some of them don't have a wife right and some of them don't have good people around them so you know be aware be ready be strong and um, so, so tell them what school of self awareness will teach you with this online course go ahead tell them since you're the guide in the course diego explain to them yeah i was going to ask you i was going to ask you to get in more detail about the school of self-awareness and 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 sell it on to the people that don't know about it and and what they can learn by going on the website so give me a little breakdown of what what what, what you have on there and, and why people should go uh, i'll i'll do it for diego go I'll ahead a go ahead easier. yeah definitely the first thing to understand is i'm not teaching martial arts so a lot of number one misunderstandings are that because i'm working with diego and he is a professional martial artist that that is the specifics of what school of self is that is incorrect um Basically, you are the common denominator of all studies that you will ever externally study. So it doesn't matter if we're studying dance, football, anything to do with the physical body. Uh -huh. right? Um, it's on the outside of you and you become the, the last thing of it. School of self-awareness is the reverse. Right. You are now the first. And in this, it will give you success at any external exploration so you have steps right and the first step of life is breath the first thing you do in life is you inhale and the last thing you're going to do is exhale so it's interesting to me that people go to school for 12 plus years and not one person taught you how to breathe correctly yet all of your physical competitive moments you hold yourself emotionally responsible, psychologically responsible for how well you did. And you probably didn't have a chance because you didn't even know how to breathe. Right. So Swick, you are a professional athlete. And uh, the first time you ran a race, you were just a boy and you're outside. Maybe you're at recess. Maybe you're just running in the fucking streets. And all you can do is look left and look right to see if you're beating the other person mm -hmm. and you're just trying you're you might be holding your breath your heart might be exploding all types of internal things are happening without your awareness right and uh, now you either smoke everybody or you get smoked you either get your ego stroked or you don't and you either now do track or you don't right and i'm the guy telling you you just never knew what happens when the guy suffers and, and physically figures it out all the way to college. And now a proper trainer says, now let's study some breath in one breath. How many steps are you taking? Typically right. we should be striding at about three steps per breath. Okay. What is your gait? What is your knee punch and heel circle drag? Are you perpetuating energy or are you just driving energy? None of these things were ever put into kinesiology study at the moment in time of grade school when you're holding yourself responsible for your failures. Right. And so I'm here to tell you that that's not you because right. you never knew how to breathe. The second part is even if you look at a child, a baby sleeping and they're breathing, there's a movement. And this means that these are the corresponding ways you breathe to move meaning you would have to have enough required oxygen to do the required task. Right. So again, when people are physically failing, you are behind on oxygen for the movement. Right. So the second part of this study is movement. How well do you move? Are you moving 
against your body mechanics within them? Do you understand your range of motion? Are you in um, what we would call golden ratio proportions? Because if you are not, and you're wondering why you're not a fucking yogi, that might be why. Right. Or if you're over here blown away that uh, the yogi or the Southeast Asian has ankle hip dexterity because they come from squatter nations where they shit in a hole and you come from aristocratic sitting on a throne and you have no ankle knee or hip dexterity and you also have a high protein diet and you're wondering why these other people are fucking gumby hmm. and you're then thinking maybe the good music and a flicker of a candle and uh and somehow i'm gonna get the spirituality in the strip mall that this is going to work and you wonder why you're not a professional athlete and your abilities are not there so now we would go into even our culture's ridiculousness of trying to understand meditation when you have all seen the imagery of a real monk pouring gas on himself lighting it in protest of the vietnam war yet you think that lululemons and good music are going to get it done so you know the power of it. The reality is, why do you have to stop life? The meditation is supposed to translate into life, meaning you should be able to be a walking meditation. Mm. It means you're holding it at all times. So anything in variation of study to this is to keep you away from actually accomplishing that task. So if you're not breathing correctly, not moving correctly, this might be why you're trying to sit still to try to do it. Right. Okay, so we have breathing, step one. Moving, step two. This is life. Step three is in life growing up, you're going to breathe, you're going to move, you're going to fall down, Mike. You're going to fall down, you're going to get boo-boos. So now you need to know how to heal. Now that you know how to heal, we can repeat this and actually fucking train. And now that you can train, you can train in any direction you want to go. Not in the linear directions of the menu options that the Western world is selling you, but in any imaginable direction, you want to take the human experience you can. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter if you want to heal your depression with cold weather like Wim Hof, or if you want to explore the depths of the ocean with holding your breath and dealing with physical pressure. It doesn't matter. Um, the reality is, is that this is the way that all of our ancient ancestors were able to push the boundaries of physical human evolution. And in our Western life of living incorrectly, we are devolving, Mike. And school itself is rehumanization therapy. As I do not put anything else on you, I strip off all the extra, leaving your essence, which was perfect from the time you were born. Nice. And that's what School of Self is about. It is liberating you from the extra to allow you to understand how little you need. Because when I wake you up to the fact that everything that's here on this world that you still can see, meaning it's, it's lasted, it was built a long, long time ago. You know who it was built by? Slaves. So I'm going to ask you with your superfoods from the raping of the bottom of the ocean, from the cultivation of needing steroids and anything else, what are you doing with all this shit when your ancestors built this world without it? Mm. And when you really empower yourself that way, you stop thinking that you deserve more than anyone else. You stop endorsing and participating in the sociopathic, narcissistic behaviors that have been rewarded in our society. And you would maybe start to have your humanity because you're acting human mm -hmm. to start to think of others. So the goal of school of self is you need to be selfish. Clearly people haven't been selfish enough to get what they need to be healthy, to be in control, to take full responsibility for their lives. So I need you to be selfish mm -hmm. to the point where you can then be selfless. So what Diego's always talking about about me is I'm at that place. 
I can dedicate my life and my energy to others because I've spent time being selfish enough to take care of myself. And leading by example, I do not ask anyone to do anything I haven't done myself at least a thousand times. And if you yourself haven't done it a thousand times perfectly, it's not yours to teach. Mm -hmm. So this world of acting like you can regurgitate it because you can make it look like it, you got to come prove it. And so when I'm older than Diego, I got more injuries than Diego, and I'm still playing out here with professional athletes, how and why am I able to do it? And I didn't spend all the time in the gym. Mm -hmm. So there must be something correct going on here. But if nobody wants to reality check themselves and look into this, truly with a little bit of respect and, and say, geez, maybe there is something going on here that this guy's half the size of the other people that he's traveling around the world to team Lakai training with Joshua Pacquiao going to Jordan and training the welterweight, uh, Jada, mm -hmm. you know, like all around the world, I've been playing with people that are top level professionals. I shouldn't be able to do it. School of self is the only way. I understand myself. I don't compete with anyone else. I simply control myself better than anyone else. And when you compete that way, you can't lose, Mike. The, you're, you're, com you're playing by your own rules. And the reason why people are feeling all this psychological and emotional stuff is because you're participating in an already created world where the rules are already made and you don't even understand them. And so how the fuck could you have success? You're going to fuck up. And if nobody's going to explain to you, that's okay. First of all, you got to do it wrong to figure out how to do it right. Mm -hmm. And so everybody trying to do it right first, you, you don't even know if you're really doing it correctly. So the reality check is this. You can either seek out the truth yourself, which all people do at a certain point in time in your life, right? Um, or life will reality check you. So most people stay in their little world where you're very safe. And then one day you walk your little ass out into the real world and you run into somebody like me or someone else and your whole reality is gone. What you understood to be correct will be upside down. Right. And when that rug is pulled, it will only be yourself and your own spine that you'll be able to lean on. Right. And that's what School of Self is giving you, is the ability to walk and go anywhere in the world and lean on your own spine and know how to be of service to yourself and others to where you are a commodity anywhere you go. And that's what we're offering to the world in a way that I'm not selling a product I'm not destroying anything to build anything. I'm working with two magics, okay? There's only two left in the world, Mike. The first one is love. Now, real love, genuine love, has the ability to create without force. Mm -hmm. And that is the power of the feminine. We see this, right? A woman can look at you, no force, and you'll act like a bigger man, right? That's the power. That's magic, all right, that's real shit right there because the world goes round on that magic. Mm -hmm. As you know, how many men have done dumb shit in your life and you've seen them, right? right? That's one magic. Then we have the other magic, which is awareness. Awareness has the ability to dissolve anything without force. Gotcha. But you have to bring the awareness to the forefront. You have to bring the mirror to the person acting ridiculous for them to be aware of it. So this pocket internet that only allows you to see what you want to see, it's keeping that moment from happening. Right. And that's why we're in the predicament we're in, where people aren't disillusioning themselves faster, especially with the lack of travel. You know, you need to go see that other people can live another way and they're perfectly fine, that we all eat, sleep and fuck. And the big differences are pretty much semantical conditionments of culture, time and escalation of Internet copycat shit. You know, the Western uh, stuff being followed around the world in progression. 
as we have the shiniest gloss and um shit we we have the best mythology right our streets are paved of gold yeah yet i have never seen it and the only story you know of the streets paved of gold <laughs> is that yellow brick road right. and so the con is to get you here to just not see the wizards that have already created the world in front of you and this masculine toxic masculine energy that has oppressed and subdued in a very uh, neurotic way the feminine creative energy is why you see men building shit all around us in a phallic shape acting like we can keep up with the godlike power in every woman that is naturally there hmm. your masculine ability is to support that the women are the flowers your job is to make sure the garden can give us the beauty and the fragrance of life so that the songbirds can bring in the magic. Mm. And if you start to deny the beauty and the fragrance of that magic, well, there is no garden. Mm. And now in the time of Kim Kardashian women and women being exploiting themselves in such a way, the flowers no longer have the beautiful fragrance and the petals are falling and there's a toxicity in this garden to where shit you're in thailand i was just in the philippines how much of the area is monocultured so the western world can put makeup on their face right. i mean you're seeing the palm tree fields left and right so you're gonna kill a jungle of over three hundred thousand plants of diversity uh, a full ecosystem because the other side of the world is so colorless and sick and ill, they need to apply it upon them daily. And then we have Asia, Southeast Asia, uh, from India to the Philippines, to Thailand, to Indonesia being what? Being told that white is so right that the skin color changing is the number one cosmetic thing in where you're at, man. Right. So, you know, as well as I know, you just being a white guy there, you feel a weird power, man. And it's different than what you felt over here, just being a regular white guy. Hmm. Well, I'm the little brown guy in a in a big white piece of paper. Hmm. <laughs> you're you're a white guy on a brown piece of paper hmm. that looks like a giant god over there and they're treating you like Godzilla. Yeah. Imagine the ego change if you feel the other thing and what type of strength it takes to actually see the truth and know the truth when you don't get to take advantage of any of these things. Right. So I was on uh, the Ariel Awani show and they cut out this little thing, but it's an important story and maybe your listeners would like to understand it. There's um, an experiment that you can look at and it's a very simple one. You take nine chickens and uh, you take nine white chickens and you take one chicken that it could be white with a black dot it could be uh red it, it just isn't white okay now what happens here is conformity the different chicken comes to to the group and the white chickens look at it and they start looking at what's different and let's say it's a, a, a black patch well, immediately, the group, the dominant group, is going to start pulling these feathers off. And this chicken is going to react two ways. The first way is fuck you and fight back. And then the nine chickens kill it. And you'll see a dead chicken on the ground because it didn't conform. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, then you have another way the chicken can react. And it turns its head and allows this plucking to happen. And this is conformity. And you can see the look and the effect on this chicken. And we've all seen these chickens because they're missing the fucking feathers, right? Mm -hmm. Especially when you go around the world, you see it in this. Mm -hmm. All right, now, there is a third option, but it's not, it's not very common, so people don't know it, it'll happen. So the the, the third option is you're getting pecked. And at first you might be getting pecked in the conformity uh, very young. Let's say you're a baby chick, right? You're just a little person. You're going to grade school. 
They're conforming you. Be like this. Do this. Do this. Yeah. In the beginning, you look away because you're a little boy or a little girl, a little chicken. And you're not strong enough. You're getting strong from taking the removal, but you're not strong enough to look at it. But slowly you start looking at them and you're seeing you're making them realize what they're doing is wrong. And now you're able to look right at them, right in their eyes while they're doing it. And this this patch that was bleeding now turns into a callus. And now that you're strong enough to know what's going wrong, some energy change is happening. And all of a sudden, the next time they come up to peck, they break their fucking beak. Hmm. And the other eight chickens turn the fuck around and let that chicken be. But if you don't grow the callus, you don't let them know what's wrong, they will conform you or kill you. And here's the other sad part of that one, Mike. There's no white chickens in nature, bro. So that in itself, we know that conformity is happening in an unnatural way in that circumstance. Hmm. Now we see the exact same thing happen in prison, grade school, high school, and now we're seeing it on the internet. And so when he's talking about verifying accounts, it's interesting to me that Google, YouTube, IG, and Facebook, who's holding the majority of internet participation, doesn't have valid verification. So you're going to tell me that you can, CCTV has facial recognition with my mask, glasses, and a hat on, right? Your dating website makes you verify who you are, but Google doesn't. Mike, I can write on your Wikipedia easier than you can. Hmm. You know what I mean? It's, it, this is the ridiculousness. And the fact of the matter is now they're like, hey, as long as I wrote it down, it's real because I can fill up this Internet space of bullshit. And it's just I don't know how to explain it, man. It's um, it's word magic. Hmm. You're you're putting it out there in a way to poison the imaginational space of reality. It is not real. It is not a documentation of reality. It is not picture. It is not this. It is a shaping of reality, no different than the winners of war who rewrite the books of history. You'll notice that all of history is very noble winners. Mm -hmm. Nobody's telling you that they fought and poisoned the enemy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nobody's telling you that they slaughtered them in the middle of the night no they rewrite the song so their people sound happy about what they did when they bamboozled these people in the middle of the night right. that's the truth and um, you can only do this when you play with word magic mm. so school of self is getting you back to where you trust your intuitive instincts and your guts which is your universe which is your uh, web to reality and life. That's why it was connected through your mother before you were even in this form of reality. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's your belly button. So you're a fighter. You know, all the bones of your body. Everybody thinks this thing is the big, important thing. The most important stuff is in the middle. That's why there's no bones around it because you need the energy to move through it Mm. and the vanity lifestyle that we're in where you're overly contracting your abdominals and or living in a fear anxiety state you are restricting the blood flow in the central nervous system and in your organs and the physiological health issues are coming from majority of people leaving all their blood and oxygen in their limbs so you look big but the area where you needed to have all your energy which is your center It's not there. And um, because people are head heavy, trying to use a language to rationalize the language of the body, which you've overridden and denied. So the first thing is when you're born, you don't feel your body. As you get hurt or move out of alignment, your body is speaking to you, Mike. Mm -hmm. The issue is most people are not listening. So God is speaking through your body to you. And it is up to you to to make those adjustments. It's up to you to build that language. Nobody can teach it to you. 
Now you want to read a book and think that this guy's got the language, right? Mm -hmm. This is no different that you go to the doctor and you relinquish all responsibility of your body because this guy's got a language, using those words, to disenfranchise you from your body. This is why he's got a proof that he knows what he's talking about by having a degree, kill a tree to tell you, tell you who he is. Because if, if he didn't tell you, you wouldn't be walking on the street and be like, I trust that guy. He looks like he knows what he's doing. Mm. All right, let's just get real. Second part is he's wearing a sterile white butcher coat. Why is he wearing a butcher coat? Because in reality, to really work on you, he's got to knock you the fuck out. Why? Because the study of Western medicine comes from Leonardo da Vinci, who was studying cadavers. And this is why you're seeing all this shit. Then all of a sudden I open you up and I give you these words, separation. You were fine before knowing any of that. So then all the humans were fine. As I spent time living in the Amazon, they cut open the animals. They see the inside. There's a relatable understanding. There is no need to get into a semantic detail here. There really isn't. And the more you do that, you're just abstracting and creating another space, another language of obscurity and another place for the head to get heavy into. That's not real. It's just not present. And um, the context of studying that versus Eastern medicine, which came before it. Right. Which is what? Eastern medicine would be like this. I take my hand, I place it in a place and I have him now write down, write down what he felt. And he's going to say, I take another hand, write it down. Another hand, write it down. I do myself. I write it down. And we come up with a uh, living consensus. And this is where you come up with acupuncture and, and, and all of this, because it's a living communicative thing. Right. I'm not trying to disassociate you, knock you out, and then act like I know what the hell's going on because I'm playing fucking operation here, pulling pieces out and <laughs> playing playing young Frankenstein. This is the truth, man. And um, if, if you didn't have their made up language to believe it, you wouldn't fall for it. Mm-hmm. And none of these people are healthier than you, Swick. So why would you believe that they know more about their body? Because of the paper, man. And because of them validating, I spent X amount of time doing this, reading this, telling other people about their body, but yet I haven't put any of this shit in practice myself. And that's what I'm saying is, why are we in a world of believing the experts that are in the business of playing expert, no different than YouTube expert because I said it because I'm 20 years old and I know how to finger fuck the computer and I know the, the, (laughs) the, the tag words and the, this, and like, it's so stupid that all of a sudden a real professional in their fifties, you can't find because they're not on here. They're not messing around. Right. This is what's happening. So the, for example, this, uh, coach Tigre, he is a fundamentally sound martial artist, meaning He can strike equal both sides in motion, transition and timing. Okay, that's unheard of today because everybody's so isolated. One thing, one thing. You're not a complete martial artist. Your comprehension of understanding the totality of position, it's not there. So this guy being 51 years old, having the foundation, it's still applicable today. And his abilities at 51 years old are light years ahead of any of these other guys holding mitts. I'll put it that way because he understands as a fighter and a balanced fighter, you need to be able to move this way and this way. I'm not going to let you get away with a one-sided stance. That doesn't make any sense. And so when we start getting into call signs of a, a a one on the odd and, and, and uh, evens on the power side, None of this really matters when we're switching stance. Now you understand evens are always power side. Odds are always, you know what I mean? So that's all. So we just had so many different developments of linear stuff in martial arts in the past 25 years. So a bunch of people can get their name said. Very few people are complete martial artists anymore. And um, that's where like, You see this thing happening because of the internet, because of what's being seen. People don't understand. How come you don't do breathing? 
oh, well, the only place I can get breathing is yoga and I don't want to do that. That seems soft. And the whole idea is this culture um, harbors this development a little bit. That's all. Mm -hmm. That's all that's really going on because breathing is a development in all spirituality because they slow it down. So it doesn't matter if you go to the Russian Orthodox monks, you know, like Fedor and his world. Doesn't matter if you go to the Buddhists. Doesn't matter if you go to the Hindus. It doesn't matter if you then modernize it and you're depressed and you need to deal with it and you live in up north like Wim Hof and you develop this. Oh, but he also knew Tumo breathing from the Asian. So you see now what I mean? Right. It, it, it's just something that should have been studied right now, just like movement. Uh, it's only Ido Portal and me that are breaking out movement in the gray spaces between the sports, not the sports. Hmm. Nobody's even talked to me about how long I've been training sports, but I mean, I was in Dallas. I trained South Lake football team when they were national high school football champs. I, I trained wrestling teams, volleyball teams, because I understand the gray space of everything in between. I can do any sport. So working with Diego and martial arts, as I am also a martial artist, not a big deal. Right. If he learns how to breathe and move, all of a sudden he can do anything. Let's now do it. No big deal. But he had to learn how to breathe. He had to learn how to move correctly because the way he was favoring dominant wrestling was a very Rocky Marciano face first. His hands are too low. It's obvious where he's going. And um, his, his face showed the proof of it as the sport evolved and people then were aware of wrestling. Right. So you watched it in the beginning. Koscheck was one of the most athletic wrestlers in the game. And within five years, it's a ton of college level wrestlers. And in that moment is when MMA's athleticism jumped a tier. Mm. You had to jump up. Like if you weren't at least college level conditioning, the rooms would just overwhelm you now. Right. So, so that changed the sport before then you didn't need that. You had guys that could just jump around and kick a little bit and kind of get away with it. Things have evolved. Now you got kids watching Bruce Lee and McGregor and all these guys and all that stuff's in the lexicon of their imagery. They're imagining it. And that's where you get a guy like Buckley taking hold, kick, spinning back, kick, knock a guy out, land on his feet two months later he's knocked out in the first round. Mm -hmm. So, so this is what I mean is amazing stuff is happening. Where's the well-roundedness that his guards up. So how come we just watch Stipe? This is the champion of the world. I've never seen a guy who knows boxing with his hands. So fucking low with a guy 30 pounds bigger than you. That's the craziest shit I've ever seen. So why he, he's not being told to have high guard, might be that you're delusionally confident because you just knocked them out before. Like this is what's happening where how many guys in this sport are suffering from injuries from training. Let's look at wink. You got, you got winkle John missing an eye and missing a nut from training. And he's a fucking trainer. So you're holding a mitt and you can't even get it there in time. This might be why wink, why John Jones got a lazy eye, why Holly's got a lazy eye, why Brown Bear's got a lazy eye. I almost was getting Because one. there's no defense in this camp, man. They don't teach them any fundamentals. They think you can just hit and run and play the hands down because you're 6'3", like John Jones. Like, that all works when you're Winkle John and you're showing off on little Thai people in the 90s, bro. That's cool. Doesn't work out when the sport evolved and now you're dealing with real monsters. Hmm. Doesn't, doesn't apply with a Piera. Doesn't apply with a baboon. Doesn't apply, man. Like none of that shit really applies. So on top of it, when you got guys that have different sizes, you're an ecto, right? You're tall and lanky. Yeah. That is a specific body build that gives you certain attributes, moves, and a style. Absolute. If you're a mezzo, you have a different approach and style. You have to, to get in or do this thing. What happened to poor Diego was he had a foundation from wrestling and he had really good confidence to go in. And in the beginning, he was just 
that fearlessness to go on the striker is what it was. And the elevation change being right here in the armpit was just enough uh, in the moment that the average striker just wasn't ready for it. Okay. All of a sudden they're like, Hey, the sport's evolving. You got to become a striker. You cannot take a guy that has no fundamentals in striking and think you're going to make him a fucking kickboxer overnight. And now you want him to stand toe to toe and play the game. Well, how'd that work with Melendez when Melendez just did straights on his ass and over and over again and beat his hooks? Mm -hmm. How did it work when Chapman did it to him? How did it work? And so I want to ask you this, man. When the coaches get to accept the win, great. How come they never accept the loss? And when you're now making the calls and you're the one not giving your guy defense, why aren't you paying for the stitches in their face? Why aren't you paying for these medical bills? Why aren't you taking the 50% loss on getting paid because you fucked up? And that's the real talk. You want to play it on the fighter. You didn't give them the tools to actually fight correctly. And that's what I'm seeing in there over and over again. So you got guys that are at the highest level, some of the guys at the highest level, yet they got huge holes in their game of, I don't want to move out of the way of an attack which is crazy talk um, because I don't respect this guy's power. Okay. If you don't respect it, then you better have your hands in the right place. That's it. You better know how to blend and parry. You better know how to roll it. You better know how to absorb strikes. So I'm seeing guys get knocked out like nothing yet. I never see any of them training, getting hit. Mm -hmm. So Diego, I hit Diego 20 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day. I hit him. So his body understands impact. These fighters are thinking they're never going to get fucking hit. And when they do, it gets them emotional, gets them all these other things. They start feeling like it's a failure versus that's what's supposed to happen in here. Crazy. Calm down. Mm -hmm. And if you actually master that skill, the fear and anxiety that's making you rush or hesitate won't be there. It, it really will be blended out. And the ability to understand when to exhale and when to breathe to escape and to move in will give you enough oxygen in your brain to make a coherent decision, not a just reactive decision. Because sometimes uh, uh, Dustin's a perfect example of this. Dustin has a beautiful pause positioning in his strikes to just see how the other guy's reacting to know where to place the next strikes. But there's a subtleness where if you're rushing a blind combination because the guy's just holding pads there and just lets you do it, you're just hoping it makes contact. Mm -hmm. You can't make those micro adjustments like Dustin's doing. You just can't. Um, that comes from being able to breathe in that moment. Mm -hmm. And you know as well as I know, one breath behind, you start falling behind on each one of those exchanges. And after the second one, the third one, you start feeling desperate. You start making bad decisions. And now you're putting yourself in this space where you didn't need to. Now it's who's faster, who's stronger. All your game plan goes out the door because you don't want the judge to see this direction. You don't want to see any of that. And that's where fighters are hurting themselves a lot. And the, the coaches are not helping in a lot of ways because they want them to win the round in that fashion. The old way that Diego was getting credit for fighting with just heart, just mm -hmm. go out there. If you just fight that way, you can't lose. Well, I'm telling you right now, 10 years later with brain damage, you can. Mm -hmm. And Gagey and all those wars, trust me, it'll be, it'll be a thing. You can see the wars that the Tony Ferguson's gone through. Now you can see the effects of these things. And speaking of CTE studies, the uh, buildup of these traumas come after 10 years. You get knocked out. The full amount of understanding what happened in that knockout does not come out for 10 years. So these kids today are being knocked out. How, I mean, like, Right and left. Right and left. I mean, that's why their careers are not going to last because they're getting knocked out four times in five years. Yeah. Now, you're cutting so much weight that you're being knocked out. 
I'm dealing with a 39 year old. He's only been finished four times. And one of them's, uh, you know, like a fake fight. Come on to a special needs kid. Like, this is be real here. These, these finishes on a guy that's 39 versus these young guys are getting finished like that one little tap and they're going down. Why? No, I'm being real though, man. You got to see this. And this is why the feeder system's got to be ready there with more guys because they're not lasting and they're not lasting because they're all action and their fundamentals aren't all there. The guy that fought Woodley last night, his fundamentals were clean as shit. He, his guard was so good. Like he was good. That was one of the better ones that I've seen in a minute, but yeah, he's a terror, man. He's a ringer. You're going to see him just float up. You know what I mean? In a second, as I talk shit to Sean Shelby and explained the ranking system and who they allow to touch gold, it's who they allow. It's the season of who they put in play. And how do we know this, Swick? It's not really a sport if it's not real competition with a real fucking bracket. And if it doesn't have a real bracket and you can't actually show me who's fighting, who, like, it's not real. Just like USADA, I had to call out USADA. USADA's not real. You want to watch my fighter's dick piss into a cup, but you don't want to show me video of the testing. One. Two, you ain't showing me the, the lottery of how you're picking these names. So all of it's bullshit. All of it. Systematically. Then on top of it, we're in Jordan and three weeks. You didn't send anybody to test because you ain't got nobody to test in the Middle East. So let's just keep that real. Then on top of it, you're not telling me the names of the companies you're subcontracting to do the testing in Russia, Brazil. Come on, man. Let's just keep that real. So you're not dealing with companies that are above board. You bought Jeff Nowinski to act like you're official. It's just not real, man. It's just not real. And how could it be real if the guys that look obvious don't get tested? Then on top of it, if it was real, do blood across the board. Blood and hair across the board. Okay. So then we'll talk about medical. I talk to medical. I say, hey, what are the requirements of the brain CT scan? When do you require a fighter mandatorily by the UFC has to get it? Only when you're KO'd or TKO'd. Not when you take an illegal knee to the head. Somehow that slips through the cracks. Come on, man. So this is the bullshit. Just the same as you got three judges that don't know the sport. Just the same as you got how many refs. All you have is holes to manipulate the show, to sway the direction, to make sure the narrative plays out as close to the written shit that it was. Because when it goes sideways, then we got to hate the guy that flipped the rig. Hmm. Well, isn't it interesting that it's pandemic? Um, global situation. First time in history, the whole world is put on one thing, right? And somehow UFC is able to function six months ahead of time. But just like Trump, he had the Arabs build it. That was, that's interesting. And um, do you think that the Arabs got a good deal out of that with UFC Arabia on the backdrop? That's it. That's all they got out of this deal. Okay. Did it seem like a lot of tourism came out to fight Highland? <laughs> they didn't make no money on that deal. Okay. That's just exposure to the Middle East and affiliation to the West. All right. So they got screwed on that deal. But let's get real. Right after this comes the bet line on IG. So now all of a sudden, you got ESPN and Disney putting up advertising of Wonder Woman and, uh, what was it, Burns and Usman. And this is on a dual ad on Facebook, brother. So this is Disney now, titillation and violence. Boom. Okay. At the same time, we have endorsement of degenerate global activity of betting. You don't need Vegas anymore. Oh, so how many people during a pandemic spent their money given to them by the government to try to make a little more? I just want you to wrap your head on all this while we're watching videos of people saying they're going to make a million dollar bet yet you didn't see the million dollars. 
That's called pushing the bet line, bro. And swaying the angle to flop the flip. I'm going to tell you right now, ain't no way Dana's putting a million dollars on fucking Askren when he hates him. And he tried to destroy him from, you know what I mean? So the reality is the money's on Logan and uh, the flip is just to get everybody to bet. <laughs> That's it. Uh, get, get, get it straight. Mike, and this is what's happening is we got a new generation of wannabe masculinity thinking they can end up on top by making money off of the guy bleeding on the screen. So when they initially lobbied for no UFC, they said it was human cockfighting. The difference is when they do cockfighting in Thailand or the Philippines, we eat them. <laughs> they don't go to waste. Now you're going to deal with because you're dealing with this generation now. You got second, third, we're about roll, rolling on the third generation. You're going to be walking in fucking Albertsons, man. And you're going to run into one of these guys. And you don't know. You don't know what kind of day they had. And you bump shoulders. You don't know what might happen. There's a whole lot of these people that are unsatisfied in life. Women with new scars on their face that people are like, what happened to you? Oh, I was a fighter. Hmm. It's a whole new culture happening. Uh, where these people don't have any mental health. They don't have any way to assimilate back into society where they were the freak show. So let me give you another space that this is similar. Uh, you see this with the gym industry. So the guys get big, you get in a, a muscle building, you get way bigger than your frame. And in the beginning of this, you're getting your ego stroked by the gym, all the muscle heads, everybody giving you love and this energy. And all of a sudden, you go outside and people are looking at you like you're a freak. So now you live in the gym. You can't go anywhere else. Notice why there was so much depression from all these gym rats when the gym wasn't there to stroke their ego. That's why then they have to put their ass on the IG to let everybody see them. Because this is that narcissistic, sociopathic behavior. Hmm. I need more than you. So let's just go to the jungle. You see an elephant in the jungle. You ever seen a little monkey? This little monkey gonna come out and he's gonna stand up all big. He's gonna grab the trees, gonna make himself big. It looks like every guy in the gym. It's just insecurity, man. It's not real. It's not real if you stop eating, it disappears. It's not real if you don't calculate when you start taking your DECA, when you start taking your HGH, when you start taking your supplements, if you don't calculate from whatever age you start to the day you die, how much money that's going to cost you, if you don't look at it that way, you're never going to be able to fully complete it. You won't be able to stay on it the whole time. Mm. You're not even prepared to financially support it. This is the issue, man. Mm. And at the end of it, nobody's believing in themselves. And when it runs out, you got to go back to the doctor. And this guy, he, he, this person's just going to dish you out whatever you want them to, right? And this mm. is the epidemic we have where there's more medications than there are people. I mean, that tells you what's going on, right? So school itself is trying to solve these problems with you mm. first. And it believes that one person can change the world when you start with yourself. That's it, man. Cool. And as far as I go with school of self-awareness, this shit has been a savior for me. As he said, it was breathing, moving, training, and healing. Obviously, there's been a lot of healing that has happened to me. Right. And at 39 years old, I still continue to be healthy. I'm still healing, you know, as I've had a, a ringer of a career, man. I've, yeah. I've, I've been in the wars, man. I, I, I didn't, I had the longest UFC career of all time. Yeah. And this has been a real true healing for me. And that's why I have got behind this movement and, you know, want to give this back to other people so that other people can have the same type of healing that I've had the same type of learning how to control themselves. And, um, well, and, and a lot of people don't realize this. 
this method has been put into practice around the world. And when you go look at the site, you can see people from around the world, military, law enforcement, around the world, the people that need to use this to function at their best, that their livelihood depends on it. That's who studies School of Self. This isn't for vanity. Mm -hmm. It isn't for cheap thrills. You're going to go into the abyss of yourself and those deeper questions you've been wanting to answer or even reflect upon, they're going to come up. And most people that are running away from school of self, that's what they're running away from themselves. Right. So right. this is how it works real quick. You were born Swick and you, you, you had to take the responsibility of your name. You had to be a son. Uh, you have siblings. No, I don't. Do you have siblings? No. Okay, so it, at least you were a son, then you were a student, then you're an athlete, then maybe a, a, a boyfriend, a, a this, a fighter, a that, maybe a husband, a father. The question is, when, when were you fucking Mike? You never had time to be you. You never had time to be you without pressure on you to be something else for others. And so to relieve that pressure, to really ask yourself what you genuinely like, not what others like so it makes it easier if you do it you know something totally different and a lot of times we haven't had a moment without a foot on our throat without having to work a certain job or a this or our parents or a society a culture to know who we really are that's that's what the whole study is about man. cool man that's a lot of information that was like two podcasts in one and i didn't have to ask a question to you at all joshua so you made it really easy on me a lot of information there that's what you call uh, that's 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 a no hit of bam. Yeah, we have the, we have the full full. Uh, we're we're very aware of the school of self awareness now for sure. Uh, very detailed, very a interesting. A little, you get a little, a little bit of that in there. Yeah, there might be more. Uh, let me ask you real quick before you go though. Give me a prediction, like uh, you know, without giving anything uh, strategic away. Give me a prediction on how this fight's going to go with Cerrone, like in in your mind. What's going to happen? What, what, what are we going to see? Um. I can tell you this. You're just going to see me at my best. And I don't know where cowboy, what cowboy is going to come, but uh, you're going to see me at my best. And I'm going in there with everything that I have, all my skills, all, everything that I've learned over the course of this, this career. And at the end of the career, really, really fucking sharpening that blade, I'm going to take care of myself. And I'm going to move correctly. I'm going to move in there so smooth, man, that I'm going to make this shit look easy. Nice. And Cowboy, he might be planning on finishing out those five fights he signed when he signed the Conor McGregor deal. But as I am ready for retirement, Cowboy's ass better get ready for retirement, too. Because he don't know, but this is probably going to be his retirement fight, too. Strong words. Nice. I can't put any better than that. So you plan to retire the cowboy. Nice. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if he even has to do it. <laughs> UFC will do it one way or another. That's yeah. the point. That's the point. You said it first with how he's been performing, right? Mm. You said it first. If, if they're cutting uh, uh, Junior Dos Santos, Alistair Overeem. Come, come on. They, they, they cut... Dodson, oh, Dodson off a win. They cut Brock. So you tell me after you maybe get served up and uh, you ain't the cowboy of the highlight reel they keep selling. Yeah, that's five. That's five. That will be five losses in a row because everybody knows that Nico fought. That was that was a loss. He got the, he got he got lucky on that eye poke, you know, because that's a loss in my book. So a uh, shout out to all you UFC fighters. You're not safe. And all of you need to be prepared for your future. You need to be collecting what you need for your brand, for who you are. And that goes for all of you, especially Woodley after last night. Be ready. Because trust me, there we've had meetings with uh, Mr. Shelby. And it has been told to us. I won't even give you any real detail. But it's been told to us. They'll sign you to a five fight deal knowing they're only going to give you the one. So they're allowing people to feel real safe in this moment 
uh, where nobody's feeling safe and they're letting people hang themselves. And um, that goes for you, Aljo. Maybe you need to be careful and be weary about running your mouth and letting them take advantage of your mind as those comments are not real. Nobody's wasting their time doing that, Aljo. Um, just like I had to explain to Paul Felder, nobody really wants you to kill yourself. Those comments aren't real. Those are coming from some power to manipulate your mind. And when you understand that, you won't allow it. And so when Woodley's phone number uh, was put out on the Internet, he was harassed during this camp. I mean, these are all forms of the lean forms of the psychological distraction forms of the manipulation of which people have no ideas even really going on mm. and that's not like just the stuff in the warm-up room or the the rat like, like there's just tons and tons and tons of it mm. this is what's going on in the months in between mm. and everybody's like this oh our hands are clean it wasn't us it's the internet it's the bots it's the this it's your fans uh we don't have any of that hate on OnlyFans. I don't think the Bellator guys are getting any hate. I don't think the One Championship guys are getting any hate. It's just interesting how much hate the UFC guys are getting. Because I know the Brave guys don't get any hate. Isn't that interesting? So if the real fans of the sports are participating, saying nice things, why can't we track the IP address of all these negatives? Because it was interesting when I did the cyber investigation, what they explained to me is they got to know what they're doing to be able to randomly roll those IP addresses constant like that. And it has to be something with real money because there ain't that many trolls at home with no life like that. Like just isn't. That's too directional. Right. Mm -hmm. Come on. So as working in special operations. Wouldn't you call that? terrorism so it looks like terrorism domestic on your own people hmm. Ooh, kind of rough kind of rough when every single one of you could be getting paid for pain and suffering that's called psychological and emotional warfare my friend hmm. and as somebody that is in counter terrorism i'm telling you they're in the wrong no Interesting hey, points. We'll end it on that, Mike. And <laughs> um, May 8th, baby. You're going to be ready. Hey, one more nightmare to scare. <laughs> one more nightmare. All right, brother. Hey, always good to have you on the show, man. And I'm um, looking forward to your fight. I'll be watching from here in Thailand. Good luck. And uh, hope to have you back on the show again soon in the future. Thank you. And we will hit you up in the DM. And so, yeah, we want to do a show in two three weeks at right before the fight okay cool got some other big news after this we're gonna go somewhere you're definitely gonna want to hear that story cool awesome thank you thanks for giving me the exclusive hey thank you swick love you bro you take care man real quick real quick real quick with mike swick